What's going on guys? TG or Thunder God here and today I am talking about Menma Uzumaki. Now most Naruto fans have probably heard or seen of the movie Road to Ninja with a lot of Naruto fans even arguing, arguing the canon validity of the movie itself just due to how Kishimoto's involvement with the movie is so heavy. And for good reason, this movie is pretty crazy with a lot of the stuff it has in it. So today we're going to be talking about the main antagonist in this movie aside from Obito, that being Menma Uzumaki. And with me I have uh, Cameron, Go oh, I guess I already introduced you but say what's up. Yo, it's glad to, I'm glad to be on the back of the channel. Yes, yes. We have a video going up on his channel as well on Menma. We're kind of Menma Glazers, whatever that means, because he's kind of broken. But the reason we're doing this video today is because Menma, as a character, you ever see those videos where it's like, what if Naruto was a Saiyan trained by Go Go Gojo who had a Rinnegan? That's like Menma. It's kind of crazy to be when you really think about it. So it's like we're gonna be talking about him today kind of how he runs a bit of a war art gauntlet and seeing how far he actually gets because he's kind of so broken that you can only really compare him to the war arc. he doesn't really fit anywhere else you know what i'm saying he's literally like a war arc boss put back in the main series yeah so we're gonna be starting him off against a lot of the higher tier war art characters because he's just generally too strong for individual Edo Tensei or like regular Jabrodis. Do you want to talk about some of maybe the base scaling for Menma and where he is strong as kind of a baseline? Yeah, okay. On an absolute surface level, we know that Menma bare minimum scales to Sage Mo Naruto because they are just fighting on par. And we know this is War Arc Sage Mo Naruto, not Pain Arc Naruto, because he mentions having KCM1 and he has a flashback to Minato's fight with Obito which he only learned existed because of his conversation with Kushina. So because Menma scales to a War Arc Sage Mo Naruto, and he has the advantage against him throughout the entire fight, that automatically puts him above like 99% of the War Arc, because even Shadow clones of War Arc Sage Mo Naruto are just boxing with Kage. Like, it's absolutely insane. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. And regardless of if you think this movie is canon or not or works, we're just going to be using that as the baseline. So kind of making that small concession for the video, it is what it is. Ah, sue me. It's a movie. But so kind of looking at that, we can't really use individual fighters at Edo Tensei. So we're actually going to be starting off with the Edo Gokage, that being A3 or, you know, Third Raikage, Gengetsu, Mu, and Rasa. And this fits really nicely because Menma as an individual is kind of capable of just taking on multiple Kage level Shinobi at the same time. There's a lot he could do. One of the most prevalent techniques that people bring up is the nine mass beasts. This is where Menma splits up a ninth of the nine tails chakra into nine mass beasts that he uses to attack the leaf village. And these beasts are actually pretty ridiculous. Uh, on a surface level, they actually do fight the entirety of the Akatsuki in the movie. It's more of a 9v8 since technically the Diva Path beats two of them. But still, Menma's kind of having an entirely different battle against Sage Mo Naruto while they're also on autopilot fighting the Akatsuki. So on a baseline when he's not manually controlling them, they're able to just kind of go blow for blow and not get instantly ragdolled by the Akatsuki. But if you go a little further, they're actually a bit more impressive as well. Do you want to talk about this? So we know beyond just being at the level of the Akatsuki, the Mass Beasts have crazy hacks. The, there's two major players here. Yeah. First, there's two priests that Menma summons that can create barriers that are strong enough to trap Minato, Tsunade, and Kushina, which is absolutely insane. So these barriers are just really potent, and they can trap Kage-level combatants. And when combining this with Menma's Reaper, he can literally trap opponents in the barrier and then siphon all of their chakra off using the nine mass beasts, which is a strategy that worked against Minato, one of the fastest shinobi of all time. Yeah. So there is actually a decent chance that the Kage get caught in a barrier like this and then have their chakra siphoned, which is kind of an instant GG and does work against large groups of people, as we literally see Menma use this in the movie against Minato and Tsunade. And, and to make a side note too, it's very implied that this is the Minato from the Ninetales attack as the limited Tsukiyomi is recreating the desires from the individual, that being like, you know, Naruto. So the version of Minato that Naruto would be thinking of is the Ninetales attack version as that's the one he directly thinks of multiple times during the movie, which if you go with that idea as well, 
puts really good stock into these hacks. So characters like Mu, Gengetsu, Rasa, and A3 have a lot of... Uh, there's, a, there's a good chance they could actually just get stuck in a barrier. A, since Menma can create four of them. And B, since he can send four slashes. Like, he unironically, maybe with the exception of Mu, who could like null his chakra signature and like maybe fly away could actually just catch all of them and end the fight right there. You know what I mean? The speed is low-key, kind of ridiculous. And we don't even know if this attack is blockable since it's ethereal and doesn't really affect anything else. It's not affected by the barrier or anything to that degree. So there, there is a lot of good stock with Memma Summons. And if you kind of want to argue, okay, maybe they just kind of keep some of the Kage busy. Menma himself is a pretty, like he's a juggernaut, like we mentioned, since A3 actually just gets beaten by a Sage Mo Naruto clone. And the KCM1 Naruto clone caliber is pretty much where everybody's at since the chakra arms are generally faster than Naruto's own combat abilities, which is why he's able to outspeed Mu on off of Gara's launch pad, which if you go up the steam imp, for example, being problematic for Mu, kind of sets up a similar speed tier for a lot of these characters. Not you, Rasa. You're not joining the club. So, looking at that, not really a good look at for Menma's base abilities against these Kage. And the nine mass beasts are just really good support, honestly speaking. Especially when you consider, for example, they're able to stall the likes of like a Focus Diva Path, which is just comparable to like Six Tails Naruto and outright above Sage Mo Naruto from the Pain Arc. Pretty ridiculous stuff. What do you think about the Edo Gokage? Yeah, like don't get me wrong, the Edo Gokage are really, really strong. But like you said, they are just on the level of KCM1 clones. And Kuruma outright tells Naruto like, hey, KCM1 won't be enough to beat Medma because he has complete control over his Ninetales. So if you look at it like that, like Menma is stronger than the original KCM1 Naruto. Yeah. And then these Kage are all scaling to clones that all have like around 1 13th of Naruto's yeah, I was gonna bring this up. at I'm the so most. I'm so glad you brought this up. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah, he yeah. made 13 Shadow Clones. So they have like less than 10% of Naruto chakra and they're still fighting these Kage. I really don't think there's an argument that Menma could be going down here. Yeah, yeah. And listen, I'm going to be honest, Menma kind of throttles Sage Mo Naruto in terms of physicality as well and can match his Rasen Shuriken in terms of AP. Like he has he has a couple different techniques. The Rasen Ringu is just outright on par with this with Naruto Sage Mode Rasen Shuriken which is probably going to be doing pretty crazy damage to most of these fighters since a regular Rasengan can actually crack the third Raikage's arm. So looking at it like this, he also just has the AP to pretty much one-shot most people here, if I'm being entirely honest with you. Things like Gengetsu's Clan Mirage, while maybe being annoying, aren't really that threatening to Menma since Edo Gengetsu, as an Edo Tensei, doesn't really stack it with the Steam Imp, and, and Menma does have AoE-type attacks to actually just break it down. Rasa is on a similar note where I don't really think you can argue his sand defense actually scales that high to where it's just going to be tanking these uh, high-level attacks from... Uh, taking these high level attacks from Menma. Rasa himself shouldn't present too many issues. Again, as you can argue, the, the Shimi, Shimigami could actually slash through his sand defense and drain his chakra reserves to zero. You kind of have to prove Rasa actually has enough durability to block a Rasen Shuriken, which I'm personally not of the same opinion of. What, what, what do you think about that? Like, where do you, do you think Rasa's defense scales that high? What, what's your opinion? Absolutely not. So the thing is, the Rasen Shuriken from a Shadow Clone of Sage Mo Naruto is just noted by Madara to have too much chakra to absorb. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, when Madara is absorbing all the jutsu of the five Kage, including Onoki's particle style, he never makes a similar comment. So if you go off of that, then the chakra in the Rasen Shuriken and Menma's Rasen Ring by extension would just be far beyond what any of the five Kage can produce individually. Yeah. So I would generally lean towards it just being capable of blasting through Ross's sand. Yeah. Especially because he was relative to Gara at best, and even then, still got overwhelmed after a decent amount of time. No, I agree. And then you have things like Menma actually being able to fly in the movie like low-key gravity manipulation stopping kunai and like pushing and pulling naruto and changing his gravity so when you look at it that too things like a3's like hell stab aren't really going to be an issue since he could just stay out of range the only real potential issue is moves like potentially un you know un becoming detectable and trying to snipe menmo with a particle style but this feels very unlikely since we think it gets to a3 and ross get taken out relatively quickly 
So I don't know if I can necessarily see Mu by himself even after he unmasked, just taking on the combined might of uh, Menma or all his not, uh, nine mass tail beasts. And that's not even talking about if he absorbs them, which we're going to get into a little bit later. Like, especially since Mu has to reveal himself to snipe someone with the particle style. It's not like he can just take someone out while invisible. So if he reveals himself, even if Menma himself doesn't see Mu, at least one of the mass beasts will, yeah. and then it'll just move to defend him. Yeah. So I don't think like an off guard particle style is really going to pull Mu the victory here. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I'll also probably add um, with the nine mass beasts is like, because we mentioned their Akatsuki level, which they are. One of them's just outright on par with Sasori. Another's just dodging Kisame sword swings. The fly, the bird one is just like on par with Data in the air, who's noted for his like attack speed and just flying speed in the air, which is much more superior to his ground speed. I said air a lot there, but more more what I'm getting at is that these these are Akatsuki level. And it kind of, they are pretty durable as well. Like the Diva Path can just hit them with Shinra Tensei. And they can be defeated, quote unquote, but they aren't really damaged. Like Daedara hits them with his explosions and they just kind of fall to the ground, not really damaged. And then the Jutsu or Technique set on them kind of poofs. And then you see like they're just mini foxes. So it also might be questionable to some extent. Maybe not in the case of like A3 or maybe uh, Mu with his particle style, but overall on their ability to actually just damage the nine mass beasts as a whole, since they're actually pretty durable in that sense. So moving on, um, we think the Edo Gokage kind of get ragdolled like pretty badly. And again, if you think that's kind of crazy, this guy beat the piss out of War Arc Sage Monaruto and was fighting the Akatsuki at the same time. So I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory. Next up, we have a much more interesting fight. We're gonna put Menma against Itachi and Nagato. We're gonna give Ita we're gonna give Nagato red hair because we kind of have to make it fair for Itachi and Nagato. Bet y'all haven't heard that before. Uh, <laughs> Trying to make it fair Ain't for no these way. two. Yeah, you're right. So there's a couple different things we want to discuss because these two are these two are definitely gonna perform better than the Edo Gokage for sure. They're both higher tier fighters, of course. Itachi and Pain, um, Nagato and respect, and I guess Pain respectively, also just scale above the Sanin, who are considered the upper echelon or just above the Gokage consistently. Maybe up until the War Arc, where it becomes a bit closer if you go off the Fan Book Two statement. But more often than not, they are just scaling above that range, and together they should just be comparable to the five Kage as a whole. And that's entirely fine. Now, one of the things I want to start off is that the QB Naruto that fights Itachi and Nagato is gen is not a full power KCM1. Now, I want to follow that up with, I think Itachi and Nagato would be stronger than a potential full power KCM1. But more so, that the version that they're fighting against Naruto is a version that Menma is also above, as his full power is beyond a full power KCM1, if that makes sense. Like, full power KCM1... It's kind of a hypothetical. We don't really see it because even when he's fighting Obito, all of his clones, like there's still clones fighting in the background. It's only until he really links with Kurama that that becomes like a thing. And now he can just kind of channel all that chakra. So he definitely comes in with good stock with his more latent abilities. But let's talk about some some of this matchup before we get into the outright scaling. Let's talk about maybe Nagato absorbing the Ninetales chakra. Well, we know there is a cap out limit on what you actually can absorb with the Preda path. With Madara noting the Rasen Shirk and his too much uh, energy like you noted but maybe you could say like nagato just absorbs like portions of the qb's chakra from the nine masks what do you think about nagato like absorbing you know what do you think about nagato in this match you know saying his chakra absorption and maybe like what not uh menma can do in response to yeah that. i do think that even if nagato starts out with gray hair he'll probably be able to absorb enough chakra from the nine mask beast in the beginning yeah to restore his red hair and at that point I do think he would actually be a little bit of trouble for Menma in the beginning, just because we've technically never seen Menma, like, see the Renegon abilities, so he might not know about the Preda path. And if you go based off of that, then Nagato could potentially catch him off guard and absorb the first couple Jutsu from the Mass Beast and Menma. But, again, as you mentioned, Nagato does have a limit. So if you hit him with a Jutsu that has enough Chakra, then it would be overwhelmed in a similar fashion to like how Madara or we see this with Delta as well. There is just a limit to these chakra absorbing abilities. Yeah. Which means that if Menma uses a Rasen ring, it may honestly just overpower Nagato's prey to path and hit him. Yeah. Because the thing with the most chakra we see Nagato absorb is probably KCM1 Naruto's Rasengan, but that doesn't have nearly as much chakra as a full Rasen shuriken or Ross Enbring. Yeah. So I think that's Mema's best bet to get around the chakra Some, absorption. Something I would note too is that 
when he absorbs the version 2 cloak off B, he's not able to continuously sap B's chakra. Like, he's not sapping base B's chakra beyond that and just taking him down. So, there has to be a cap out limit. You like, and I know the third data book kind of talks about the Renegon like sending chakra into like an endless whirlpool and stuff like that, but that could also just mean that it's a lot of you know he can absorb just a lot of chakra and there's still a limit you know what i mean so you know you can kind of argue both i think itachi is actually a bit more threatening in this matchup not because i think he's stronger than nagato or anything to that degree more so to the nature of his arsenal just due to how he has a couple one-shot abilities that may be problematic like a Rasu snipe is problematic especially if menma's kind of chilling in base or in a more split up state like with the um nine mass b split up or potentially with like a totska blade takedown or something to that degree uh, and there's obviously variables to this like obviously menma can make barriers with the nine mass beast that would probably spawn too fast for itachi and nagato to really do anything if you go under the assumption that the same minato being used is the same version that naruto kind of has in his mind that fought you know the qb that fought uh, obito later on that it's that version to kind of go off that idea doesn't really look good for them and then you have weird stuff like the shimigami loki might be able to hit nagato out of his red hair by sapping his chakra to zero like we were That'd talking about crazy this. it's so crazy um in which case we we do generally think it may require menma's more latent abilities to actually take down this duo now what are menma's more latent abilities well if you watch the movie you would know that menma and the nine mass beasts are just nine portions of the nine tails chakra that he can reabsorb into himself and when he does this he almost attains a like a perfect jinchuriki light state where he creates like a full body nine tails it's actually closer to the yin half of the nine tails like color wise which you know just really cool but the reason this is problematic is because this is, like we mentioned, outright beyond initial K a full power KCM1 that Naruto would have had knowledge of in the war and actually requires Naruto to link up with Kurama and enter a temporary KCM2-like state. That being like removing the seal between him and Kurama and just unleashing all of that chakra. What do you think about this form of Menma? What do you think about the problems it presents? Yeah, I do think Menma is just a KCM2 rival, which makes things look really bad. Agreed. And I know this might sound weird because it's like, okay, if he's a KCM2 rival, why isn't he in KCM2 literally? And why isn't Naruto in KCM2? But we actually see Killer B draw a distinction between the normal Nine Tails chakra and the one Naruto uses in KCM1 and KCM2. Yeah. Because he calls the one in Kurma chakra mode like pure Biju chakra. Yeah. So the argument for Menma not being in that KCM2 like state would just be because the Biju chakra he absorbed isn't pure like the one naruto uses yeah so it's very much consistent for menma to still be a kcm2 rival with this kurama summoned and when you take that into account it kind of gets pretty bad for itachi and nagato yeah because when you look at it like itachi is more of a rival for ems sasuke who's relative to kcm 1.5 naruto or mastered kcm then this kcm2 level threat at least in terms of raw power, would be beyond both Itachi and Nagato. Yeah. Now, to, so the re and the reason this we're, we're saying there's like a bit of a jump is because Menma he Loki kind of implies that he has possible nature energy, but from what it seems, he is a Sage Mode rival or just superior to one without the Nine Tails Chakra, which does seem to amp his base form as he gains the QB eyes. So all of the feats he was performing against Sage Mode Naruto and the Akatsuki were in base while his strength was split up. So when you got back to it with him kind of forming the full QB. It makes a lot more sense why he'd be this strong. And I love the explanation you just portrayed. So you kind of have like this individual who can ha access these amounts of power, this amounts of chakra. And again, he literally has like a fight with the Ninetales where they're just spamming entire Bijou bombs against each other. With like him being stated, for example, to be superior to the likes of Minato, Kushina, and Naruto from the movie. Minato noting, we don't have that kind of talent to actually beat the masked man. And again, if you go off this being a potential higher version of Minato, low-key not really looking good for a lot of people here and this isn't even talking about kushina who has pretty ridiculous implications granted she doesn't look that good in the movie so i don't i don't know necessarily how strong she would be in that case although naruto is aware of her arsenal so he would have to think about that and that would have been something remarked or brought up in his desires but you essentially have a lot of higher end scaling for menma and then you have the fact that he can essentially summon a qb with kcm2 levels of power that can just start nuking him in, in bijou bombs which is something he kind of does in character so in that case 
it's it's kind of a bit of a different situation because then you have Itachi Nagato versus like a KCM2 Naruto, which isn't also a good look. And there are win cons. Chibaku Tensei is not one of them. Menma is nuking that thing instantly. It's not going to be an issue. The only way you could really argue he doesn't is if he doesn't figure out the jutsu. But considering I, this is supplementary material in the anime, Six Tails Naruto relying on instinct alone, like not even being Naruto conscious, had the idea of just shooting the giant sphere. I feel like it's not crazy to suggest the Nine Tails would also do something insane. So even if you argue he maybe doesn't figure it out, Itachi makes a distinct note that the attacks get pulled into the court anyway. So even him just thinking, oh, I'm going to just shoot attacks at it is a good enough strategy. So Chibaku Tensei isn't really going to work since three Bijou Bombs, the Bijou Bomb scaling higher than Naruto's most powerful ranged attack, that being the Rasen Shuriken. Off of his comparison against the third Raikage needing an attack that would just outright one shot him compared to the Rasen Shuriken, pretty much makes that this technique's useless. Uh, you do have things like Itachi potentially of Matarasu sniping Menma if he's on the Ninetales. Because the weird thing about Menma in this day is he's actually vulnerable. Like, Naruto's actually able to defeat Menma by, like, hitting him off the Ninetales. Like, he jumps up to try and clash with Naruto in the air and he slaps him in the, in the face with a punch. So, Menma is a bit vulnerable. However, Kurama should have enough sensory to actually be able to avoid it or shift Menma out the way. Kurama should have sensory just off of what well, you want to start with the a tail statement where it's exclaimed that he has a pretty overwhelming amount of or excess sense but on top of that Kurama is also able to elaborate to Sage on Naruto how the ten tails is in relation to nature and the world itself also telling Naruto that t going into a form that puts you one with nature wouldn't really make a difference or he kind of explains like the outer workings of it giving this implication that he just does have a fundamental understanding of nature or just has sensory abilities kind of on a similar level so kind of going off that i think the nine tails having sensory especially if you go off the eight tails having that is kind of fine and if your argument is it's a perfect jinchuriki i mean so is menma so i feel like that's also fine so going off that that feels kind of good and then you also have a bit of an issue with like a potential tosca blade gg what do, what do you think about this the tosca blade is just stated to be able to cut through anything and itachi's best bet is probably just to poke the nine tails itself and seal it away because I do think it would actually work. Yeah. Not because the Totsuka Blade can seal like a nine tails level amount of chakra. We actually don't know if that's the case. But the Totsuka Blade is stated to specifically seal away the soul. So even if it doesn't seal Kuruma himself, Kuruma's soul would just get sealed. And we know that the tailed beasts still have a soul in the same way humans do because the Reaper Death Seal still works against Kurama, which is specifically stated to require grabbing the soul of the target itself. Yep. So if Kurama has a soul, and the Totsuka Blade can seal souls, then Totsuka Blade GG is honestly Itachi's best bet. Yeah. Especially since when you look at Itachi's fight against Orochimaru's Hydra, we do actually see that it has a decent amount of range. Like it's able to reach all the way up to Orochimaru's chest, from the Susano. Yeah. So there is actually like an all right chance that it could possibly tag Kurama. Yeah. If you want to argue like large scale Matarasu, even on the Nine Tails itself, considering Menma is more of a perfect Jinchuriki, you might be able to argue he's actually might be able to chakra shave off portions of the Amaterasu in a similar notion to how maybe the Ten Tails did, although that's more so in the Ten Tails biology, but closer to how Naruto did in the Final Valley. Yeah, I agree. So that leaves us with Itachi's last win con which is probably just trying to get due to the nine tails itself as at least in the anime we see that it's implied fugaku can do it so you could argue based off of that that itachi can too but the problem with this is in the third data book it's stated that no one can control the nine tails in naruto which would just include itachi a potential counter argument to this statement is that obito is alive and he could control the nine tails so that would just contradict the statement and render it useless but the problem with this is that Obito was already hit with Minato's contract seal, yep. which per outright prevented him from controlling the Nine Tails. So that's why Obito can't control it. And from there, you could just imply that, okay, since it's stated that no one but Madara can control the Nine Tails presently, then Itachi's Genjutsu just wouldn't be good enough to control it either. No, I um, I 100% I agree. And the main argument for people who say like the Mangi Kyo Sharingan is needed to control the Nine Tails. That's not actually true because Obito A controls with the base Sharingan and B that's more so an idea that's passed alongside like the Uchiha myth mythos that have been like kind of passed down from generation to generation. It's it doesn't actually mean 100%. And even then Itachi's also just lying to Sasuke like 
Madara and Izuna, that's not exactly how it went. Like, if you go off Itachi's explanation on everything, Madara snaked Izuna to take his eyes. You know what I mean? Which is clearly not the case. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was more so Izuna was going to die that day. So, clearly, that's not really as good. It also implies Madara and Izuna were on a similar level, which isn't the case since Madara generally was always stronger than Izuna. So, I don't I don't buy into that too much either. So, there's always, there's a bit, like, don't, you shouldn't really take Itachi's explanation at base value for everything. So, looking at that, it kind of seems likely that Menma has higher interpretations for scaling and not Ita Itachi is more so the breadwinner in this matchup just due to him having kind of these more hacks moves that might be effective. Um, a lot of Nagato's like large scale AOE attacks aren't really that good. And then you kind of get into crazier attacks that we didn't mention, like Menma being able to perform an attack on the level of Chaotic Shinra Tensei and the Dai Ross and Ringu. He essentially flies up on top of the leaf in the movie and just drops a nuke that bodies the entirety of the village. So realistically, right, if he does that here, I mean, aside from Yadimir potentially being omnidirectional and like preventing that, wh what are they doing? You know what I'm saying? Wh what's happening? Wh wh what's going on? They're dead. They're done. It's cooked. So, you know, he also does have ways to mitigate, like if you're going to bring up Nagato summons and stuff like that, he actually has pretty cracked AoE jutsu. Like he could just drop a casual chaotic Shinra Tensei level feat and it's not really an issue for him at all. So and the reason i say it's not an issue for him is because like the movie kind of happens on the same night so he fights the leaf village fights the akatsuki then fights naruto and then they have that bijou battle so he's doing all this in succession and it's never noted to be anything of fatigue so if you really want it to be extra you could just say he starts dropping a couple of these as well which is pretty ridiculous so yeah and any closing thoughts on this or yeah i will say again itachi and nagato do have win cons like i'm not saying this is a stomp Agreed. in menma's favor Agreed. But I do think he can win more times than not just by using his KCM2 level power, which should just exceed these two fighters by a pretty decent amount at this point in the series. Yeah, and we should also mention the reason this is like KCM2 level and not, you know, a full nine tails is because it's on par with Naruto's nine tails, which is half the nine tails. Because some people don't make that distinction. So it's it, it, if you were going to, you can't really argue higher interpretations for Menma past that. Or if you were, it's kind of, you know, I don't know what you're doing. Next up, we have Sage Mode Kabuto. Um, I took the lead on the last one. Why, why don't you take the lead on this one? What, what do you think about Sage Mode Kabuto versus Menma? Specifically, we'll, we'll, we'll give Kabuto the cave as well, just for the sake of argument. Okay, the problem with Kabuto when fighting against Menma is even in the cave, it's possible that Menma may just blow it up off rip. Yeah. Which may sound ridiculous, but if Menma either drops the Great Rasen Ring, which blew up the entirety of the Leaf Village, or he just outright summons Kurama and starts spamming Biju bombs, the cave will just get blown up immediately, which kind of brings Kabuto back to square one, even if he starts with it. And at that point, it makes the battle a lot less in Kabuto's favor. Yeah, he, he has the, the regular Rasen Ringu, which is the Rasen Shuriken one, and then the Dai Rasen Ringu, which is like the Chaotic Shinra Tensei move. Both of which would probably do extreme damage to the cave and make it so Kabuto's kind of cooked. Dai Rasen Ringu might actually just one shot him since Kabuto's durability in this form is a lot harder to gauge because he more so is just kind of liquefying through attacks regenerating over time you know phasing through we don't really have the best durability feats for him like for example he gets his horn cut off by a regular sword from itachi which maybe you can argue he didn't know they were there but they still are a part of his body and it would be a little weird if they were just arbitrarily weaker than he is so there's a little tough issue there so he actually does have probably the potential ap to just take down kabuto fully with kabuto really being unable to regen from these levels of attacks with menma also just being able to I, I don't think the nine mass beasts are that relevant in this encounter since Kabuto also does have AOE types type of attacks like the white extreme attack, which may actually hinder them. It's kind of debatable. I don't really think there's enough of a measure since we don't know necessarily how those pieces of chakra function, if they can actually hear things or if they uh, go under the same, you know, if they have like, if they fall under the same like, you know, physicals as like a normal person or anything to that degree, I would venture probably not. 
but who knows you know what i mean so there's a lot of possibility is there with like menba coming in pretty confidently as well since itachi's physicals are on the same level as kcm1 naruto's with his physicals also being able to contend with kabuto at least from long ranges close quarters kabuto does seem to be able to get the edge on itachi multiple times although i, I think generally they're close enough to where like itachi can swing a sword at kabuto and kabuto isn't so much faster that his horn doesn't just get nicked off although again he knows he doesn't quite remember he has them but more so noting that the speed gap shouldn't just be night and day as obviously they do fight and this fight lasts for a couple chapters with them eventually winning so if we do go off of kabuto being like somewhat relative to itachi then once menma summons kuruma kabuto will kind of run into the same problem that nagato and itachi did which is the raw power gap is too great and even though kabuto has like a very varied arsenal like it's a really good and diverse I don't think a lot of it's going to serve a good purpose to put down Menma. Like sure, he does have Tayuya's sound genjutsu, which ordinarily would be extremely effective against almost everyone, but we've run into the same problem where Menma's a perfect Jinjuriki, so he could break out Kurma out of genjutsu and Kurma could break out him yeah. if either of them are caught in it, in the same way that Itachi and Sasuke did, except more efficiently because they're already touching each other. Yeah. So all they have to do is transfer a little bit of chakra and boom, they're out of that. And then you have Kabuto's other jutsu. I think his best bet is probably just the chakra scalpel, like using it to try to cut Menma in half in the same way that he cut Itachi in half. Yeah. But the problem is, like, how is he going to reach Menma when Menma's on top of the Nine Tails' head? Yeah, like, I don't know if he could do that. Yeah, Kabuto just like has all these like pretty niche and effective techniques. Like he can create chakra rubbing that like the Susano blades can't cut. He can like touch an opponent and like damage them internally. There's a couple different things he can do, but like what is he gonna do once Menma's above? Even the white extreme attacks effectiveness just dips because it's a farther distance with you know, so the noise is obviously not gonna pick up as much. Same thing with the light, it's just gonna be a very difficult situation. And then you also run into the idea like is a white extreme attack gonna be able to bind a full QB? Like, is it gonna be effective to that extreme, ironically? I don't think so. I don't really think you can high, uh, argue it that high. So I think, honestly, I, like you said, Kabuto's best bet is trying to catch him in base or just with the nine mass split up, which also presents its own problems. Once he actually merges with the full nine tails, he just kind of clips up to those KCM2 levels, which is just too much for Kabuto. And Menma in character or his nine tails does just spam Bijou bombs like straight up like that is a is something he does do like in character this is a strategy menma does employ and we do see that even though kabuto can negate durability like his ability to liquefy himself does have a limit yeah we see that suigetsu is extremely screwed up after he gets hit by a biju bomb from b and if kabuto is just tagged by multiple nine tails biju bombs despite his great regeneration he'd probably get vaporized and lose the fight right there yeah which means that despite kabuto again being extremely strong just like itachi and nagato menma is just on another tier of fighter next up we have obito in the edo jin cherokee uh, i'm gonna be honest i think menma would actually probably just ragdoll the edo jin cherokee I think he scales, like I mentioned, to a higher form of KCM1 Naruto initially than the variation that is actually just contending with the Edo Jinjuriki. On top of the fact that, look, if I'm going to be honest with you, we already saw KCM2 Naruto take down the Edo Jinjuriki at full power when Obito is coming at him like he's going to kill him. So imagine what like that same variation of the Ninetales would just do against the same Edo Jinjuriki it really wouldn't be that much of a problem. So then you kind of go in reverse and you have somebody who just should be at that power level. Um, maybe not in base with the chakra split up, but maybe with the chakra fused with him with the QB features. He should be able to do fine against the Edo Jin Cherokee. I think like a lot of their base ability, I think you could maybe argue the Edo Jin Cherokee would be able to do well against the nine phantom beasts since they should be superior to the six paths of pain and maybe are on the same level as general akatsuki members so i think them beating the like nine phantom beasts would be pretty solid but then like would they be able to get out the barriers for example you know what i mean like there's a couple different interesting points what what do you think about menma versus the uh, edo jin jerky i do agree that the edo jin jerky would probably have an advantage against the nine mass beasts when the fight first starts out especially if they go into their v2 cloaks yeah but the thing is menma himself is just strong enough to combat this and eventually when obito decides to fully transform the biju because i think the fight will be contentious enough for menma to push him to that point yeah menma will absolutely respond by summoning the full nine tails 
And then they just have the exact same fight we see on screen where half the nine tails just kind of dominates the Biju pretty badly. Yeah. And he would just be able to beat him up. No, it, it would be it would be actually pretty ridiculous what he could do. The main problem for Medma in this situation, obviously Obito himself, in the fact that he's going to have a difficult time reacting to Obito actually appearing behind him and attempting to like BFR him or throw him into the Kamui dimension while he's on top of the Nine Tails because he's not fused. He's not like Merrick from Yu-Gi-Oh where he's like I fused with Ra, you know what I'm saying? He's not with he's literally just sitting on it and letting almost letting the Nine Tails fight to an extent. So that's kind of the biggest opening and that's the opening naruto exploits in their actual matchup this is the same thing minato who has ftg needed like needed ftg to escape this level of like kamui gg and white mask obito consistently reacts to a, a stronger variation of kcm to naruto granted that's like not the variation that uses a kurama avatar but still basics um kcm to naruto so going off that idea and the fact that he's able to wood style suppress grab and survive headbutts from this naruto he should be able to have the speed necessary to actually just grab medma and again like he'll be able to appear anywhere throughout the battlefield and he might even try it while the bijou are fighting themselves or maybe after medma um runs up the tail beast timer because his tail beast timer runs out the same time like naruto does in his fight like it's he's, he gets defeated but he's actually like not out for the count like he's still able to keep fighting in a weird sense because obito can control his body further on and just use use it to fight naruto after so kind of looking at that he kind of comes in like it seems like obi there's nothing really to stop obito from performing this nor is there anything in menma's arsenal to really stop Obito, or like even the barriers, for example, that was stopping Minato, Minato can FTG out of. So Obito should be able to phase and then Kamui himself out of as well. So nothing really there is too much of an issue for him. And that's even if he starts in like base against Obito. So White Mask Obito should be fine in this encounter. Yeah, I agree. Like the one thing Itachi, Nagato, and Kabuto, like their one problem is how are they gonna get on the Nine Tails' head to hit Menma? But Obito's Kamui just gets him around this problem entirely. Yeah. And honestly, the chances of him catching Menma off guard are pretty good. Just because, in my opinion, he probably has a pretty big speed advantage over Menma himself. Yeah. Just due to keeping up with KCM2 Naruto, which means that he could probably just suck him into Kamui, yeah. which is kind of a lame win con, but it's kind of how it goes. Yeah, that, Memo that, just doesn't have a counter for it. That's literally Obito's win con. You also just, argue uh, Obito has Bijou restraining rods they can use against the Nine Mask Beast that he uses on Gyuki, which also could present problems and just take them out of the equation entirely, even earlier on. Although Obito might not use them since it was requiring quite a bit of chakra to actually restrain the Bijou, even opting not to use the Rinnegan abilities, which we know he has access to. So White Mask Obito, should walk away with a pretty distinct w in my opinion but we think this kind of goes in a similar fashion to the naruto fight where he takes down the edo jin Cherokee and then kind of gets caught lacking by obito himself with him either running out the bijou timer or obito eventually catching him on the head of nine tails last up mm -hmm. we have madara um what what do you think about madara man you, you want to just talk about this real quick okay so far menma has had like a raw power advantage over everyone but when it comes to madara he can summon the perfect Susanoo, which generally rivals the Ninetales. We know this because the Ninetales was capable of fighting equally with Hashirama's Wood Golem, and the data book actually notes that they fought evenly. So, we know that the Wood Golem and the Ninetales are relative, which is important because Madara's perfect Susanoo is capable of fighting Hashirama's Wood Golem in the War Arc. And to be fair, this is a weakened Hashirama because of the Edo Tensei, but Madara would be weakened as well. And there's the fact that in the War Arc encounter, Hashirama was in Sage mode, whereas in their final Valley fight, Hashirama only used the base form to fight the Ninetales. Yeah. So I do just think it's consistent that Madara's perfect Susano rivals Kurama, which is further supported by the fact that he says the Susano rivals the Tailed Beasts. And the reason why this is so bad is that we're specifically talking about 100% of the Nine Tails here, whereas Naruto only or Menma only has half of it, so, which means that Madara's perfect Susano likely outscales Menma's main trump card off rip. 
Yeah, I, I, a good comparison that you drew up or, or brought to my attention was how the Ninetales is being suppressed actively by Hashirama's Wood Dragon, which would have made like its Bijou Bomb that it used at the Wood Golem catches a bit weaker as it's dealing with Chakra Suppression on top of that. And then that same Ninetales can like blow ahead in the wood, the same Wood Dragon from a stronger variation of Hashirama, whereas, or, uh, whereas Madara in the war can just kind of ragdoll Naruto pretty easily with the argue i would argue it's probably a weaker variation of the wood dragon the one hashirama used but still can do it even while holding back to an extent because naruto's a jinchuriki madara is the perfect person to take down the nine tails straight up his wood dragon is potent enough to suppress it like we've seen and after that madara can unironically just use the perfect susano to get up to menma himself and then like slice him in half yeah. and do him like Tsunade. It's just really bad. Yeah. Menmo has even less counters to Madara than he did against Obito. Yeah. So it's pretty bad. And then like, you know, nine mass beasts, 25 wood you know, clones, uh, you know, like not, 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 not really a comparable metric anymore. It's kind of getting ridiculous. So that's the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you guys enjoyed us talking about Menma. We we actually had a ton of fun talking about this topic. I'm I'm I really hoping you guys like this. If you guys want to see more topics like this, let us know down below. Definitely check out Cameron down below. I know you thought he was spitting in the video. All that good stuff. You, any closing thoughts or? Nah. Thanks for having me on, man. Of course, of course. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Bye bye.